Well, you guys have seen Mark Robber's backyard squirrel proof bird feeder. I've got a version two, except mine is a lot deadlier. Well guys, quick look at the pond before we head out. Uh, it's looking pretty It's looking pretty good. We're doing some amendment. We're adding some stone around the outside and uh, doing some erosion control. I'm gonna show off my brand new gloves from Princess Auto. Got these on sale. They're uh, lined, so they're nice and comfy and nice and crisp. So you see snow here today. So uh, definitely gonna need a little bit of hand warming tools. So thanks to Princess Auto. These are a nice comfy pair of gloves you can grab all kinds of stuff on sale at princess auto they've got like tons and tons and tons of things and of course our uh, bass pro shops food plot is a little bit uh well covered in snow so i don't know if anything's out here eating but because we got the snow cover here we can definitely check we have some dog prints here so i would guess because they're coming from back here and not connected to the front that's probably coyote so we've got our coyote uh, all set up here. We could probably just do a, a foothold trap right in here somewhere. But they're all through here back and forth. You guys remember we set the snares back there. So we might do that again this winter. Well, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. The last video I made, we, we actually put this blind together. Hello, anybody home? It's meant for turkey hunting. It's a pretty slick setup. And then we've also got the plastic tarp shelter. You guys have seen this before. This is a pretty popular video and a lot of people said, ah, it's a piece of junk, it's gonna degrade, it's gonna die. Well, look, did it die? It's perfect shape. It's got maybe a little bit of condensation on the inside and then maybe there's a little bit of discoloration. But I mean, this thing's been wicked awesome. You got ferns gluing up through the bottom. The bed's in perfect shape. We had the wood stove over there and it's super comfy. You can see this has been a good investment. It costs hardly any money and it's been solid as a rock. It's just formed through cedar. Uh, we've got some dead cedars, formed it all together with some screws and it's turned into a really ideal setup. And of course it's just next door to the blind, the turkey blind, which is gonna be the squirrel blind. So I'm gonna clear out some of the brush here, make it nice and good setup. And then the idea is to set up some of the bird feeders we have and, and pick off the squirrels. You can see this uh, shelter is holding up quite a bit of a snow load here, but it's got a good pitch, so most of it falls off. The uh, turkey shelter, on the other hand, it's got, a lighter it's got a lighter pitch, and a lot of the snow is actually staying on top of it. So it's providing quite a bit of strength here. We've got some pretty heavy uh, two by not two by four. It's got some pretty heavy timbers up here holding everything up. You can see I can barely, I can barely lift that up. But as it melts, it should fall off. But uh, we're going to have a nice view out here from this angle here. And I'm going to clear out everything out of the way to make sure I can, I can shoot out of here without, without touching anything. That's going to be the key. I want to be able to reach out here and shoot as well if I need to. So the next thing to do is really to get those squirrels to get comfortable coming into the corn and then they're going to be like, okay, it's worthwhile hanging out here and it's worth the risk of coming into potentially dangerous situation. One there, maybe one there and one there. I might as well just hang them up in the tree. They're kind of rudimentary setup here. Uh, obviously they're not any good for stopping squirrels getting in there but that's exactly what we want they're gonna have to work at getting the feed out that's for sure so this is just regular whole kernel corn you can use cracked corn they will eat that too but i find the whole kernel stuff they'll they'll actually spend more time on and they'll get the they'll get the grain out and probably think i could just throw this on the ground and that would work too but the whole idea behind this is uh I want to be able to have the squirrels up in the air because it's going to just going to make for an easier shot. And then we're going to hang these up about uh, head height. That door doesn't even close. It's so stuffed up. A 
Oh, these squirrels are gonna love me right up until they get shot at. There we go. Next time we'll, maybe we'll set it up so that uh, I just have a little screw holding it up. There we go. Trying to do is get a, a runway across here. Okay, that's pretty good. And they're gonna have a runway to go from one side to the other side without going on the ground. And I give them a spot where they can kind of work on the seed. Okay, that's pretty good there. I can put some stuff there. That's a good spot to pick pick squirrels off from any of these little stumps here. Remember, anytime they can get up off the ground, they're gonna do that. That looks pretty good. Which is gonna make short work of unbrushing this. It's a little too, little too brushed in right now for squirrel hunting. Debrushify this thing. But if anything comes in here, I wanna be able to shoot. And of course, I don't know how many shots I'm gonna be able to get off on a squirrel or the squirrels before they're like, Meh, kind of had enough of that. By putting a lot of food out here and then let them, they, let them get used to it, then they're gonna, they're gonna weigh those odds. And after a while, I'm expecting that they're gonna be pretty tolerant of having me here. So we really don't wanna have anything in the way because obviously any little thing that's in the way might deflect or impede the slingshot. We've got a chair here, make sure the chair is operational. You might have to be sitting here for a while. Looks like it's in good shape. I've got 50 pounds of coal kernel corn. It's the uh, cheapest stuff you can get. It's about 13 bucks Canadian for 50 pounds. You get two of those and you're gonna get unlimited shooting out of that because there's gonna be a ton of squirrel activity coming in. The actually, second thing I've got is I got three bird feeders and these were actually put out on the curb. Nobody wanted them anymore, so I grabbed them. And I thought it would be funny, not only because I'll be able to raise them up, put them up in the tree and have the squirrels come in and grab the corn out of it, but when I miss, they should make a great sound. Now, I'm gonna come home with a squirrel no matter what. Either it's gonna get done with the slingshot, hopefully. If not, I am definitely gonna be using the 22 and be picking them off. So we've got the bird feeder set up here. We got one there. We got one over here up in the tree as well. We've got a nice runway over top, so hopefully that's gonna encourage some squirrel activity. And then we've got corn piled up on stumps down below. So if they're not uh, wanting to do up the tree, they can definitely do the ground activity. This is the closest one. It's about five, maybe 10, maybe five feet. Five feet away, let's say. The further shot is about 15 feet or 15 yards, uh, about 15 steps. So that's, that's about as long as I can shoot comfortably. Um, there's some really good slingshot shooters who can shoot very, very long distances and very accurate. I'm not one of them. I'm an amateur, but I'm going to do my best. And the next time we come out here, we should be ready to blast some squirrels one way or other. All right, guys, I'm going to thank my sponsor. This is the Vigorpool 1200. It's the captain version. Check the links down right now in the description, and I'll pin the comment as well. You're going to get between 15 and 30% off, and that's going to be right through New Year's. So they're having kind of like Christmas, New Year's uh, special right now. So this thing is a beast of a machine. It's got 12 inputs, and you can use them all at the same time. It charges from zero to 100 in an hour and a half. And with solar, it's in five and a half hours, which is pretty crazy. It's got really great handles at the bottom, so it's easy to port. Perfect for off-grid use. Obviously, for me, it's charging my cameras and batteries, so I've got the GoPro set up right now. I've got my cell phone as well. You've got all the ports you come to expect from a battery unit. You got USB-C, you got the regular wall outlets. Flick the display on it so it tells us how much we're using, how much we have less, how much charge we have. You got your charging devices here. So this is through the cigarette lighter adapter. So if you guys wanna do some boondocking or if you are doing some car camping and then you got your regular wall outlet. And then on the back here, we've got the parallel port. So that means you can actually join up two of these together to double from 1200 to 2400 watts. And here's another cool feature. You got lights. 
So this would be really good actually for winter camping because you always need an extra little bit of light in the tent. And then if you're interested, you can also download the app, which is gonna connect the two devices together so that you can track your usage. It uh, can actually serve as a backup, so it'll switch on as UPS function. That means you'll get uninterrupted power. And what's cool about this is it gives you 3,500 recharges. So pretty much you can not need another battery for a very, very long time. You guys check out the links down below. You're gonna get a pretty neat a discount, as I said, between 15 and 30% off. And that goes all the way through to New Year. So check out Vergapool. And this is, again, this is the Captain 1200. And if you wanna grab two, like I said, you can connect them up in tandem and you're gonna get twice as much output, 2400 watts. And like I said, it's got some good features and quick charge time.
we could smoke them. Well guys, it's another exciting squirrel hunt today. I got everything set up. As soon as they came in, there's three black squirrels again and a mess of red squirrels who just scattered everywhere. Last time they kind of looked dumb at me and they climbed up trees, so I thought I could actually get a shot at them with a slingshot coming in, but no luck. Um, this, the squirrels here, they're, they're cagey, man. Um, not a lot of people hunt them, but for some reason they just, they're just they just dialed in to any kind of human activity, any movement. They don't stick around. It would be nice if I could just walk around and hunt them, but not going to happen here. That's why I've got this thing set up. So it's all dialed in. They made, they made a huge mess when I was gone. They knocked over my corn pile. I put it up on the logs to make it a little bit harder for them to grab. Um, I don't want them to deplete all of the corn that's here. I want them to keep coming until I'm done hunting. So they're almost through 200 or 100 pounds. They're almost through 100 pounds of corn right now. But uh, the most important thing is keeping those bird feeders topped up. And I'm hoping to get at least a couple of squirrels so that I can make some kind of meal out of them. That would be the ideal situation. Conditions are good. We know the squirrels are active. So it's just a matter of getting dialed in with the slingshot. What I noticed from last time reviewing the footage is that the squirrels would actually jump the string or in this case jump the band. So as I was releasing the ball bearing, the squirrel would jump before it actually reached them. So that's not good. I also realized though on the bright side of things that when the squirrel's up on a tree, they can't react as good as if they're on the ground. And I was actually talking to Zach Fowler at Fowler's Makery and Mischief, who's an excellent slingshot shooter. If you guys want to learn how to shoot a slingshot, go check out his channel. He's got a great tutorial, and he's actually the one who taught me how to do it, although I'm not as practiced. What I realized is, and what he told me, is that if the squirrel is on a tree, they can't react as easily as when they're on the ground. So I'm going to try to take more selective shots today. If I can get them up on a tree, I'm going to take those. Um, but we've got about 20, 25 minutes or so before the squirrels get active again because that's pretty much the timeline. I think that's about as long as a squirrel can remember. And then last time, I also realized that after about an hour of me shooting at them, they pretty much had had enough. And then they were off in the woods chattering at me. So there might be another video where I pretty much take out the gun and wipe out all of the squirrels here. Because <laughs> at that point in time, they're just going to be super educated. All right, let's get dialed in. Let's get relaxed and let's start hunting. Oh guys, I freaking smoked them. 
right in the bean. He was uh, really wanting to go into that bird feeder, but he was presenting perfectly. Two times, the first shot I missed on him. Second shot, I held right on the bean. I freaking mashed him. Yeah, there's still some squirrel activity. Man, am I pumped up. Freaking drill them. Uh, this guy won't be making any more noise anymore. I know there's a, a bunch more left, so I'll hang tight and see what else we can produce. This is a red squirrel. And uh, I'd like to get myself a black or a gray squirrel if I can, because they're a lot bigger and meatier than these ones. But the tail, you can see how fuzzy that tail is. I use that in fly tying. So maybe I'll be able to turn this into a, a fishing lure and uh, catch a fish with it next next spring or next summer. I hear some activity out there, so I'm gonna get set back up, see if I can't get another one. was a tough one. He's getting my aim off a little bit. I think my my bands are getting a little cold and so it affects the trajectory a little bit but uh, that guy was silly enough to stick around let me have a couple of shots and uh, I think I hit him a little funny. He went across the tree and then he went up the tree and then he freaking collapsed back down. I didn't know where he went at first but uh, I did see him go over to that tree He's kind of wobbly and then he kind of went halfway up and then I'm pretty sure I fall, saw him fall down. But I wasn't sure if he went around the back of the tree. Anyway, he's right there. So that's uh, three down. I got, uh, I actually got one the other day. I got one squirrel, two squirrels, three squirrels, four squirrels for my trouble. That's not a bad haul. I'd say that was a pretty good success. I'd say the backyard mark robber deadlier version worked out pretty good. Of course, last day I didn't get a lot of success, but that's because the squirrels are on to this obstacle course. They've figured out that when there is somebody in the blind here, it's not a good idea to show up. So they've been skirting the issue. They've been moving around over here and in the background as well. And also behind the stand, I had a few come in today behind me over to the edge here as well as on the other side. So I think I've made the perfect squirrel proof bird feeder because, well, no squirrels are gonna be coming around here, at least while I'm around. So that's of course the pitfall. But once I leave, the squirrels can, the squirrels that are left can flourish. And so that's the benefit of putting a hundred pounds of corn into the woods is that Whatever squirrels are left are gonna have 
uh, very successful over winter. I'm gonna make use of these squirrels now and uh, we've got a little bit of a surprise. Well guys, I have never owned a Coleman stove, ever, in my whole life. My dad used to own one, and we would use that for camping. But I got my brand spanking new own Coleman stove. I got it from Bass Pro Shops. It is the most expensive one, because if I'm gonna go big, well, if I'm gonna go gas, I'm gonna go big. So these actually use uh, these canisters. I am not 100% sure how to even put this thing together, but I think you have to plug that in there, something like that. Is that working? How come that's not working? Kevin can set this up. He knows how to use a Coleman stove. But I've been hard at work getting some uh, special treat together for Kevin and whoever shows up today. I think it's actually only Kevin. Don isn't here anymore. Is that how you put it in? You just turned it in? You gotta push though, but there's a oh, I, on it. yeah, I didn't push it. I don't actually. This isn't maybe not tight enough either. Just like that. Is that good enough? Mm -hmm. So I've already done some work here. I have uh, brined the squirrel in Wadobo. I did it for two days. I drained the water off, which takes out a lot of the blood and the bitterness. And then what I did was, uh, after I rinsed it off, I boiled it for two hours. And, and then I baked it because I didn't want to do a ton of cooking out here. So the idea with the stove here today, this morning, is basically to just bring it up to temperature so that we can eat it for a snack. We're actually doing some work over at the pond here. So this is all ready to go. Uh, you know, do I have to turn that first? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> You're not sure? You may have. What if I turn preset. this? What if I turn this Try first it. to plus? Should it, should it make a sound? I think so. Oh, oh it's making a sound. And then what? Oh, look at that. Like that Dude, pretty crazy. Technology. When I can set the temperature. Do you, are you hungry right now? You want a snack? Sure. It's not a lot of food. All right. It's three squirrels. Three squirrels. So I, I was hoping, I was hoping, why? Well, yeah, I got an extra one Say, I was hoping Dom was going to be here. We could each try one. Um, but that should take no time at all. That's cool. the way to go. Bass Pro Shops. You guys know you can buy more than just hunting and fishing stuff. They've got. I bought bedding there. They've got bedding. They've got housewares. They've got cookwares. They've got camping tents, sleeping bags, everything. So check it out. And we did the we did the food plot over here with the Bass Pro Shop seed. Obviously it's under snow and it uh, worked pretty good. We got some rabbits in here. We didn't get any deer, but. I got boat parts from Bass Pro. I got my chair I didn't put in, but I, I bought it. Slick. Do you know what else we got? A horn, what's that? I brought paper towels. Oh my, these are gonna, we're glamping. We're glamping. These are gonna be finger licking good. I don't know how, how long this is gonna take. Probably not long. Because I basically, I just took them off the oven. So, oh, they're steaming already. I'm going to keep that moisture in there. Sweet Baby Ray's, two hours of tender loving care from hot water. Crazy. To break the fibers apart. Yeah. I'm hoping they're just going to, it's going to break all the bone delicious. So you want to pick bones out or just fall off the bone? Well, there's, yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Cool. Is this recording? Yeah, it's not frozen yet. All right, so I think this is the first time Kevin's eaten squirrel. I think it should it should be warm enough. Uh, should we turn it off? I don't know. We'll turn it off. We'll turn it off. I checked it. I think it's warm enough. The steam coming out. Oh my! So it should look should look like chickeny, a little bit chickeny. It's like a tiny chicken. Well, yeah. So it's like it's like mini mini wings. All right, grab a. What was that? That was a weird sound. Grab a leg. Pull up. See if that leg pulls off. Itty bitty leg. Oh, it's like fall off the bone. Itty bitty, itty bitty leg. This is like, that's delicious. Cherish every bite, every morsel of that tiny red squirrel. It should be raw because it's like, that's really good. Is it tender like uh, chicken wing tender? Well, it's better than chicken wing tender. Wow. So a lot of work went into these little tiny squirrels. <laughs> Many hours of pleasure and joy. And trials and tribulations, oh, it is good. But you can eat everything off the bone completely. <laughs> Look at that. How's that? Little tiny, tiny bone. A little bit of gaminess, but it's not too bad. You taste gaminess in there? Do you not? No. 
Well, you got a, you got a good piece in. I taste a, li a slight, very, very slight hint of, um, of gaminess in the one bite there. If you gave this to people and you didn't tell them anything, besides a few hairs here and there, <laughs> they wouldn't know that was a squirrel. And they wouldn't complain about it. But you can't expect to just eat it the day you shoot it. I left it in the fridge for five days. That lets it kind of uh -huh. stew in the juices. If there's lots of, you know, spoiled parts, you definitely don't want to do that or through the guts. And then I cleaned it and then I brined it with wadobo. I should have added maybe a little bit more salt would have drawn a little bit more of the blood out. Drain that off, rinse it, boil for two hours. And then I put some sweet baby rays on that. And then I baked it for 20 minutes just to get a little bit of a crisp. I could bake it a little bit more, but I didn't want to bake it and then bring it out here and then cook it to dry it out. So it's pretty good. What do you think, scale one to 10? I'm gonna say. Solid, solid eight. It's pretty good. Solid eight, there you go. Well, I'm gonna keep picking away at this. Thanks to this uh, video sponsor, Vigorpool. You guys check out the links down in the description below. And there's gonna be some sweet sales on right up through New Year's from 15 to 30% off. So check the link down in the description and the pinned comment. I'll see you guys on the next one.